Good morning. It is the middle of August and guess what? It's ready and time for a garden tour. I think my garden's ready. First, let me take my quick sip because it's morning and I'm trying to do this before the heat really kicks in and we have been hot. About 100 degrees pretty much all week and they're saying it may be hot again all week again. This is the rainbow garden, but I think we'll make a circle and we'll come back. I just love sitting here. Got all my projects here and I can work here. Got my gazebo that we put up. Boy, they're cheap. Keep an eye out for those because they really reduce them sometimes down to about a hundred bucks and I can get things done. But let's take a walk and see what's going on against the wall. Let's walk over here and let's start. Oh, my beautiful tomato plant where the deer have been munching away. See in the center? They come over here and they forage. And then they go over into my other parts of the garden. Haven't done those two yet. And I've got an idea of what I am gonna do with those two. My corn are doing really, really well. I don't wanna get into a subject that I'm not ready to talk about right here on a garden tour, but I've got some soil that I'm suspecting to have persistent herbicide in. We'll go into that another time. So what I'm going to do with that, because I'm not 100% sure, and there's no way of really checking unless you want to pay a fortune of money to see if it's in there because there's so many different types. But you know what grows in it? Corn. Why? Because it's designed for grass type products and it doesn't hurt them. The corn is doing fantastic. So I'm thinking maybe take the last couple bags I've got of that cheap potting soil, put it in here, with you know colored leaves and different things that I've got and then grow some more corn and then by the time the corn is done test it with some lettuce or maybe something else and if it grows then I know I can use it somewhere else. Watermelon! Oh this is an old plant. Now see this is the thing. I'm not 100% sure if the old plant caused this to be wonky or I put some of that potting soil in there. So I'm not sure. The problem is that chemical is being used on everything these days. On crops, in animal feed like horses and cows. And the, what the problem is that herbicide goes through their body. And then it gets into the manure that we buy. If you buy steer manure, oh, try to stay away from that if you're going to do a vegetable garden. But like I said, we'll get into that another day. So let's see what's going on here. This, oh, I still have one more squash on that. I did a big squash harvest the other day. I walked all the way down and picked a whole bunch at one time. I generally don't do that. Generally what I do is I go through and I pick as I need. I picked my eggplant, what I did the other day for dinner. I picked what I needed. There's more inside. I can't stick my hand in there because there's thorns, but I know there's more inside there. Got some squash starting here and I'm hoping it will make it because we are now in another month going in the fall. And as you could see, there's a lot of shade, but we're still morning. The sun will drift this way. And then this won't get, oh, this is getting sun now, but this will lose the sun soon. And then that will all get sun. But I think all this, this whole wall gets a good eight hours a day of sun, even in the winter. So that could really work for me. Here are my black cobra peppers up against a nice warm wall, which they happen to love in the evening. And you know, you say, wow, there's a lot of peppers on there. I already picked about 40 peppers and froze them, washed them, dried them, and put them in the freezer. So we're gonna have black cobras all winter now as the plant will possibly not die back, but slow down on producing. And then I did the same thing on this one and I already have more peppers. That is the Fresno and I'll be picking those and whatever we don't use, I'm gonna freeze them too. And in the yellow bucket is celery. This is Malabar spinach from last year. The thing is I don't wanna to plant too much of it because I happen to not eat it that much. Sometimes I'll walk by and grab a leaf. Walking onions, nothing, I didn't get to this. But as you can see, I'm clearing out all the old tool and old stakes because I have a whole new way of putting this stuff up. It will look neater and it will last longer and we'll get more into that another time or as we walk by it. It's the irrigation tubing I now came up with and I'm using everywhere. You know how long that stuff lasts for? It's guaranteed for eight years. If it's guaranteed by the company for eight years, I'm gonna have it sitting out here for a very long time. 
got a tomato plant that I moved over to here. So soon I will get this staked up. The only reason I haven't is I'm waiting to see if it's going to make it. And it looks pretty good. This is probably, well, it got knocked over. You, I think you already know about the tote. The guy scaled the wall, fell on all these totes. He cracked that one. I didn't realize when he landed. He broke the stake. He, they arrested him, so it doesn't matter. But the point is, the blue tote, which is a new tote, didn't get damaged at all, even though it was, it was smashed on the ground. Everything came out of it. So I'm not sure if the squash will make it. Here, that's the one I taped up last year. Still going strong. I'm going to redo a lot of this. I have to be honest with you. I did not get to this. A lot of it is regrowing. Some of it, there's been new stuff, and I think I'm going to do this over winter. Being that I want to start making almost all of my own soil from trees and leaves and weeds, I'm just going to start throwing it in there. I have to be very conscious to make sure I collect everything. All these green weeds on the ground, that's going to be so important to me. That is my new soil. And you go, weeds? It breaks down and it's wonderful. And I know there's no chemicals in there that are going to hinder any growth from my vegetables. So that's what I'm going to do all winter, slowly add in things. If I decide I don't want this avocado tree that came up, this becomes my new soil. Any vegetables I don't eat and can't give away or do anything with will be my new soil. A big squash? Wow. Can you imagine how good that would be as far as new soil? This I'm going to leave and stake up for the winter. This is doing really good. It's a tomato plant that came up from last year. I've been picking tomatoes. See, there's tomatoes all over. This I haven't done anything with, and I'm going to start building on that. What I'll do is I'll remove some of it, especially by the holes. See, this is, I'm leaving the sow thistle for the birds because they eat the seeds on it. And then I'll start loading up weeds and leaves and stuff, and then I'll top it back with that soil. So that is what's going on here on the driveway. Let's go in the front yard. Yeah, front in the yard is coming along pretty good. I've got, remember that squash plant from last month? I literally yanked it out and moved it. It has now set root really good and it is taking off and look at all the new flowers. So that's going to be really good. Then I've got some brassicas. I think they're broccoli. You know who likes broccoli? Kitty. So we'll see and I'll keep them well watered. They're actually layered. They're in their own pots and then I can get something in here. In here I've got tomatoes I planted. I moved them from somewhere else as well. And I had some extra old tomatillos. I threw them in here. If they make it, they make it. And that's how I grow tomatillos. Take old ones and throw them in. And then that, see, I'm already collecting sticks. I can lift the celery out and get something planted in there. I really haven't done too much in the front yard, but you know, it takes me time and there's no rush. It's not like I'm short for food. And I'm not short for soil. I'm making my own soil. So I'm kind of stepping back and analyzing. How do I really want that? Well, this, since I've got too much shade now, my goodness, it's green. Wow, we get all kinds of birds in here and everything. I love the pine trees. They're getting bigger. They're doing more shade. I'm going to remove the rest of the tool and I have use for that tool. Even though it's been out here for over a year, it's still good to use for a lot of things. And I think I'm going to start layering this with walking onions. And if I put the walking onions in pots, I can move them by lifting them out. See, like I did here, all I have to do is lift them out. And then I can plant when I'm ready something in there. I don't need to do mint in here, but I can leave the mint in pots. Again, something I can lift out and then go, whoo, I'm going to put some Korean melons in there or something. So that's what I'm going to do here. So here I'm taking it real slow and everything is doing good. This needs to be moved. It's so big and beautiful, but I don't think it's going to go straight anymore. So I could do all these are cuttings and they'll make big, beautiful purple tree color. So I'll have to see how I'm going to do that. Let's walk down here. I know I made all these different gardens, but I happen to love them. And then I turn around and I make more. What am I going to do? This tool has been what now? Two years old? Going strong. But I decided instead of knocking myself out growing vegetables in here, I'm just going to put little cuttings of geraniums in there. And it's working out fantastic. I don't have to take care of it and it'll look really pretty. There is my turmeric and ginger finally came up. Why did it take so long? 
because the issue is we've had cool nights and warm days and they want it warm day and night. They're very tropical. So right now we're doing really good. We're warm at night. I'm, I'm not sure in the 60s and sometimes even 70s. And that's what it likes. So it's all starting to take off. I've got that where I make my compost tea. All I have to do because of my two system is water the orange bucket. I can put kitchen scraps, leaves or whatever in the black one. And then it runs through the tote with all the earthworms and it comes out that irrigation tubing and it fills in there and then I can just water everything, which is not just water. That's compost tea. So I don't have to have a bucket of compost tea here. So here I've got my turmeric, which you can see have the big leaves. Aren't they gorgeous? That's the turmeric. Now the skinny leaves you see like this, that's ginger. So it's really easy to spot. So if you don't label it, which I did label it, my ginger has the light color tags from my tote lids. Oh, I see brassicas growing back there. And then the pink ones, I did that so I would know right away by looking at it, it's turmeric. So that's doing really good. And then this is the black turmeric. See the leaf? Isn't that beautiful? I believe there's only two now and they're in the blue bucket so I can spot them instantly. Now the other thing is I've got my stevia and that's growing back here. It's been growing for years, all from the one same plant I bought at one of the big box stores. Now, I actually went into the store that time and what I ended up doing is tasting them. And the one that had the sweetest taste, you're not supposed to do it, but hey, I'm alive, it was fine. I took that plant home. Now it dies back in the winter, almost all the way down into the pots. But the thing is it comes back every spring. Oh, long before the turmeric and the ginger. And I also have split it from the base. So whether it's coming up from seed, I'm suspicious it's coming up from the roots and it's a perennial. It just dies way back. It doesn't die completely, but being able to split it from the roots like I did. See, if you can get in here with me, see this? This is the original pot. And sometimes I grab a clump out and I moved it over to another pot. So I think it spreads from the roots. That's the way this is growing. Oh, and the other thing you're seeing here are zinnias. Now, yes, I know I'm supposed to deadhead them. Absolutely. The more you deadhead them, like this one's starting to go, you take them all the way down and it will split off and grow many more flowers. But here is the thing. Do you see this? It's starting to fall away. That's not really falling away. What that's actually doing is birds are coming. Goldfinches come, different birds come and they eat the seeds. And this is why I am now growing zinnias everywhere. The seeds are being spread and I want the seeds. Now being that I can collect this and I'll probably collect this really soon because the stem is brown. So it's completely done. I want to make sure the seeds are ripe and plump and it being exactly the way they're supposed to be. If I pick this flower, see the seeds are starting to develop. And even though the flower is dying back, this is not done. This is still feeding off the mother plant. Once the stem starts to dry, the seeds are ready. If you pick your seeds too early, you could end up with seeds that just won't grow. Or maybe only a few will grow, not all of them. So this one's ready. And now that I've got the seeds off the pink flower, I can trim those back and let those grow. And then all in here, I'll get all new flowers. Yes, it will slow down if you don't pick them. Kind of like peppers. You don't pick your red peppers off. If your plant's got red peppers, it slows down. But like I said, I'm collecting seeds, so that's okay. Same thing here. I'll have to look, there's the seeds and the flowers brown, so I can take that off. And once I know it's ready, trim it back and then it will take off and do its thing. Let's go into the bird garden. I just love this. I've got a new ginger table, turmeric table. Let's go into the bird garden. Now we're into the bird garden. I kind of let this do its thing and go wild, but look, I've got squash. And deep, deep inside, I'll show you, it's starting to finally develop squash. Isn't that cool? Now, I will have to tell you, I don't know what it is. It just came up from the compost because this is the place I've been dumping everything that I don't know where to dump, including leaves. So if I have a yellow leaf like this and I'm not ready to use it for anything, I just leave it in there. It will break down, dry up, and become soil. So this has been great. So now I've got a new squash plant growing in there. Now I can actually very quickly get some five gallon buckets in there and stand them on either end. 
get that full of leaves and stuff and start growing in there too. And I might, I might. We'll see how time goes because we can grow in the fall. There's that tree collard. Must have fell off of this one. All you have to do is plant a little tiny piece like that and it probably fell off down there and it will grow. I've got oregano way back in the corner I can't get to. This tree collar will have to be trimmed. See how it got too heavy? It's just too heavy. It should never be allowed to get that big, but my garden, if that's what I want to do. Going back here, oh, Gary's going to have another dragon fruit. Oh, do I have things to tell you about dragon fruit? We'll have to talk about that another time. He has been pollinating dragon fruit. We've had a ton of it, but we've actually had problems with bees and bees in not a good way. And that's why I'll have to do something completely on dragon fruit. So if you've got dragon fruit, let me know because the bees have actually caused more harm. It, it appears than good, but all in all, we are, we should have a lot of fruit. I think he said he's done over 30, 40 flowers. And like I said, here's another one right here that he, he will have to do probably within a day or two. And there's some flowers back there. See the yellow ones? They didn't make it, but the one next to it that's green did make it. And then of course, all the purple tree color that's coming from this one. Somebody asked me, what happened to the one I bought on eBay? This is it. It's in that pot, which has no bottom. And it goes all the way up. But the problem is it hangs over the side. So it went up over the fence and it's hanging. And what I really need to do is get back there, do a lot of trimmings and get it back up. But you know, it's not causing too much damage. Oh, maybe a little bit to the fence there, just wire. And I can do all kinds of cuttings. Then of course I've got my dinosaur kale. This is from the original one from like six years ago, just cuttings all over. Dragon fruit growing everywhere. I'm gonna start growing dragon fruit in buckets and I've got a system on how I'm going to trellis it up. It's going to be fabulous. But right now I'm just going to let it do its thing because I don't want to cut anything because it keeps developing flowers and it will do that probably for the next few months. I see a hummingbird back there. And what is it feeding on? I don't know. Let's see if we can see. I'm not sure where it went. I think it was feeding on, on some flowers back there. All right, so let's keep going. I know birds always, oh, they just flew by. They always stop me. Here's just something Gary picked up in the trash. He brought it home. Somebody threw it out and I said, oh, I can use it. So I've got a bird bath up there for now. Then I've got all my onions, walking onions. They've got to be cleaned up and I've got to get the tops off. These are walking onions. They're supposed to fall on damp soil and take off. When you leave them, I don't know if I've got any here that I've left like this, they dry up and they die. They just, they, they don't store well. I mean, you'd have to store them someplace damp, but not damp enough where they're gonna grow. I, I don't know. The birds have been eating the greens, as you can see here. They sit on top and just chew away, and that's okay. And like I said, I don't wanna trim any dragon fruit because I want it to grow to its full potential and see if we can get as many flowers as possible. And then maybe, Deep into the winter, I might start cutting and doing some more cuttings. And then of course, this is how cool my bird room. I am definitely still working on it. I have a lot of work to do and I'm gonna do a whole lot in the winter. I've got some goldfinches up there. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, he just took off. And they come all day. Now we don't have that much sun yet. I wanted to get out here before the sun came out, but this has just been beautiful and I wanna get more maybe some more plants trellis along on all this, these tree limbs I put up, and then I'm putting my solar panels up higher. So it's been really good. And of course my zinnias that are coming up everywhere, the canary yellow zinnias, I got the seeds for free from Baker Creek when I ordered some seeds last year. And I've been just putting them everywhere. And see all that, it's all coming up on its own. The seeds fall, cause I don't take, I don't deadhead them. And so the seeds are falling and they're just growing. I love it. And then I've got all these different flowers. I have picked up different types. Oh, keep in mind these totes here. These are, I believe this spring will be seven years old now. I can't believe it. Bought it at a thrift store and not new. And they're still going strong. And if they're cracking, it's my fault because see how I let the plants lean? I should not do that because that's putting pressure on them. But they're doing really, really well. And then of course my mint. Oh, it's escaped. It has, but you know what? We're so dry, it's not going to do any damage. So let's keep going. I think this is really cool. Let's, we 
could spin around over here for a minute. Kitty's garden's doing real, ooh. I'll have to come back and get the broccoli. This came out of your garden. This is doing really, really well. I'm very happy with that. And then the water runs out from that big hole there into there and I've got basil and onions. And then we kind of moved this over because we were moving things around. We had some plumbing issues a while back and so things got moved. And you know, it's doing really well here. So I might just leave it for now. I can sit here all day and sometimes I do. And then I just talk and this is the perfect place to vlog because it's so beautiful. The birds are all hanging out in the trees right now because they're like, she's standing up, she's right here. What is she doing? And so they're not sure, but I see the most magnificent bird. The bowl here that I keep on the ground for the lizards, the other day, it's on my other camera, so you can't see it. There was a California thrasher in there and I thought, wow, took a big bath in there. It was gorgeous. So I'm planning on building it. I've got to get some more of my fountains I built there and better stands in there and then tuck them in among the plants and get rid of clear bowls. I told you clear bowls are nice. They work good, but see how they, they turn yellow and you clean them and clean them and you really want, you can't clean a clear bowl. You can scrub it, but it's never going to be perfect. A little goldfinch coming in. He says, I'm going to come in and take a bath anyways, because she is talking too much. Oh, he took off. Then I've got some of this in the ground. These are just different brassicas that are in the ground. I put some tool around there a while back. See the old tool? Now the reason I did is there were roly pullers and stuff going up and eating a lot. I don't mind the birds nibbling on it, but they were actually causing havoc to the plant. So by putting that around the stem, nothing wanted to crawl up. So that ended that and it grew really good. Oh look, the bee's gonna go to the candlestick. Okay, let's keep walking. And then there is one of my first fountains. That is electric, but I love that. I got that at a thrift store on my birthday years ago. I walked in there and he had just been unloading it off the truck and I think he sold it to me somewhere between 15 and $17. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Now that's collared and this has got to be old. Now it could be hybridized, could have come up from seed, but see how big and round the leaves are and how the plant grows different than the tree collards. The tree collards get really tall and big. That is really cool, but they're coming back. They've made a comeback, maybe because the cool weather is coming. Again, another tote that got moved with all the plumbing issues we had a while back. And I'm just not sure where I want to put it. So I'll just leave it there. It's not my way and it kind of makes a good habitat for birds to come in and hide. If you've got fountains and they're not coming to it, make sure that you have some place for them to dart into. Even here, they'll dart into here and after they take a bath because they need to dry off and they need to feel safe and away from danger. Now that is one of my favorite plants. That is a hybridized plant that came up on its own. I think it's a three-way. In other words, something hybridized and came up looking odd and then it threw seeds again. I think it hybridized with the dazzling blue kale because that gets purple in the winter and you can almost see the purple on the leaves. Let's see, so what else? Let me spin around and see if there's anything I missed here. Oh, I don't know if you remember my lemon balm. Do you remember it wasn't growing and I had to take the celery out of this one? Well, we finally got the celery out of this one and look how big this took off. The celery is now in its own pots but it just wreaked havoc on the poor lemon balm. Now it's doing fantastic. And this is a new nursery for baby walking onions I'm putting in here. I've got to get a lot more nurseries around so I don't lose a lot of them. Did not get to this. I've got to get in there because I've got a really good water fountain back there that I cannot see. And I want to get in there and do something with that. And then even here, I did not do anything that's last year's old eggplant. Got to pull that out, drop it in there. There's one in there trying to grow, but that's not good. So I need to go through all this, but I've kind of left this. Wow. Does that not look green? It looks beautiful and I really haven't done anything. I mean, yes, we took that old gazebo that Gary found in the trash. He set that up and then I crossed it with different sticks and branches and different things, but I really haven't done anything as far as vegetable plants. I figured I'll take my time and do it in the winter. Especially, see the sun's gonna be up. I'm gonna show you this real quick. Like within five minutes, it's going to go 
up and then this gets sun all morning and I think we're barely nine o'clock so it could be 839 and boy that comes up and it's going to bypass the palm tree and see it's almost there that's why I can show you and then this is all got sun all day and it's hot back here this is one very hot garden perfect for winter growing but in the summer it's brutal it can get really brutal so even though they seem like they're struggling they're actually still doing well even in the hot summer heat because the totes hold water i didn't water this let's see i'm trying to think if i watered it yesterday or not see how damp it is the plastic totes hold water which is the reason i've got plants a lot of you say well how are you growing plants in 100 degrees because the water is retained in there. Some of them have the holes just above the bottom. And by doing it that way, there's always a little bit of water. So I can get away with every other day. If I didn't have it that way, or if I had it in something like grow bags or even in the ground, I'm going to have to water here, this garden because of the heat, probably every day, if not twice a day in the heat. But because of the totes, I can get away with it. And the soil has dropped. Soil always drops. It'll become compacted. Now, it's doing really well, so I'm going to just leave it till it's no longer doing well. But this is one big plant for one small tote. Oh, and then over here, eggplant. Now, see what I did here? This is the way I used the tubing. This was a quick fix. Literally took me one minute. Two tomato steaks. Put the tubing across. We're going to get really into it. this in the spring. And then I just tied some yarn, one, two, three, and now it's holding up my eggplant that is full of eggplant. There's a whole bunch in there. See? The weight, it was knocking over the poor little plant, so it worked really, really well. This is where I'm still feeding the birds. Now, the thing is, they're dropping the seeds all over, so they're growing wild millet, and they love it. So I'm going to try to grow more wild mill millet, and then, of course, there's my one moringa. Isn't that cute? You used to have the big one. We took that one out a while ago. So we've got this that came up from seeds, probably from the other one. And then I've got a squash plant in there. And then these are all in the ground. Now these containers, these pots, they're floral pots actually. They have no bottoms. So this way when I water the plant, when I water in there, I know that plant's getting water. Otherwise, if I water that one that died back, it may look like it's getting water, but it may run off. If it runs off, then I don't know if it's really truly getting water. But notice the ones that had the pots around it, they're doing really good. Even this one, see, it's got a pot there. Look how beautiful this plant is doing. And that makes a big difference when you're planting. So if you have issues when you plant some stuff in your ground, if you're in a hot area, try that. Maybe put some pots there with no bottoms and that should work out really, really well. Oh, we're gonna have squash in here too. All right, so you can see back there also, I've got a lot of stuff in the ground. All these are in the ground, all the different tree colors, but they may be in a pot with no bottom. All right, so there's the papayas. Yeah, these are the only ones doing really, really well, and they're in a tote. Can you believe it? The ones in the tote are doing well, and the ones in the ground are really suffering from the drought this year because they're trying to look for water underground, and there may not be enough, and I try to water them, and it's just not quite working. But these are doing really, really well. Of course, they have long left the tote, cracked through into the ground, and that's okay. And this is something I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be setting up a lot of totes this year, and anything I don't want is going to go in there and when I come back in the spring and start planting that will be all broke down. I think a lot of us should do that because we can make far more of our own soil in case we ended up with something not that great we can dilute it by having our own healthy soil. Let's go through the gates and see what's going on here. Oh I left my hose out last night. That's right because this is where I watered last night so I pulled it through. Okay I know the grow bag is gone. So I've got this grow bag here. Now the strawberries here on the chair are doing really, really well. I don't have any strawberries, but they're sending off a lot of runners. And then I think there's one tomato left back here. And the rosemary smashed because the deer come and sleep on it. I do believe that the deer and the coyote go into the rosemary because they probably roll in it. And it's probably something they can get onto their fur that will deter ticks and fleas because of the smell. Keep that in mind. The animals are not stupid. They know exactly what they're doing. 
Yes, we lost. Oh, look, there's, I don't know if you saw, but that's my bunny and it lives here and it knows me. Oh, there's the second one. There's a pair that live here. I'll show you in a minute where they live and they're very friendly and they come out while I'm working too friendly, but that's okay. I, I love them. So I'll show you why later. Yep, there's the end of the papaya. My big, massive papaya fell over. This went boom, I'll have to do a whole video on that. But it's very sad, so that one's gone. It, but it's been around for what, five, six years? So what can you do? I'm gonna start more, and we'll just go slowly and do it again. Now that one's doing okay, but they're struggling. They had a tough winter, it was so cold for them. And now they're really trying to make a comeback. And no matter how much you water, the other plants are probably robbing the water, plus the big pepper tree. They're not doing that well. Now this one's doing okay in a pot and the roots went through. This one's doing really good, but you probably watched me plant that. I'll show you what's going on here. There is a cardboard box in there, see? These seedlings were growing in a two, basically a two system compost bucket. It was kind of set up like a two system and it came up from the seeds that were in there. So I ended up moving the whole group and they put them in a cardboard box, dug the box into the ground, and then I stabilized the box. Well, instead of tooling it, I put this trash can here because there's no bottom. Gary had cut the bottom. See, there's no bottom on it. See, there's the box. What I'm trying to do is keep the rabbits from not eating the trunk, and they will do that, especially on young plants, and it's working. Now, once they get established and they get bigger, maybe by next spring I can lift that up because I want to make sure I can lift it. I don't want to leave it where we have to cut off a trash can. This one is on its way out. We know that, and I'll show you. The trunk is going. So it, this one had issues, and that's basically it. And then my pomegranates, which I have to keep picking, and I did pick some. I've got pomegranate. This is grown from seed. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, spiky, spiky. Got a pomegranate back there. Hope you can see it. There's another one back there. The animals do remove them, sometimes before I do, but I managed to get some this year so far. And then that's the little cactus I picked up one day off the side of the road. I told you the story. I was so excited, I picked it up. Very little thorns, no thorns. Brought it home, stuck it in the ground. It was a little cactus leaf, and it grew into this beautiful cactus. Next time I drove by the same area, I saw, oh, another leaf. Jumped out of the car, grabbed it. My hands were covered in thorns. The next leaf was full of thorns dropped it, came home, had to pull out all the stickers and decided one was enough. So look at the polka dot plants. I decided just to put some polka dot plants here. Maybe I'll put a pot here soon and maybe for the winter put some parsley or something, but aren't they gorgeous? I've talked about that too. What's funny is if you go into inside a store and they're selling them the same store, it could be Lowe's, Home Depot, even, even nurseries, they'll sell the individual plants for $9, $10 and they're gorgeous, but you go outside and you can get a whole tray of them, which I did for $3.88 as outdoor plants. So funny. Okay, so now you've seen this side. Let's walk over here, and then we'll do a walk over to the other place. We'll go see the chair guard. Let's see, what's, this is going really good. Oh, it overflowed. See, it slowly seeps out, and that's plant food. That is fabulous. Now. This is gonna have shade for a couple more hours and then this gets full blazing sun all day. Now this is my red roselle. So that's really cool. This is nothing. This is just a cutting. I actually went somewhere a while back and I saw a beautiful geranium and I took a piece, a little tiny piece, and look at that. It's growing. And now I love layering inside a tote. I just put them in a pot. See the roots coming out? And there's something about putting it in your totes that the microbes and everything go up and down. And I'm telling you, cuttings do really good. I've done figs that way. And then just a little brassica back here. Oh, that stinker, did he make a hole? No, he did not, the hole's on the inside. This is where the rabbit lives. See that? The hole goes underneath the totes. Now, in his defense and my defense, this was old tool from last year and it started to fall away and he jumped in there and found he can eat the potato mint. He loves potato mint. Now he hasn't touched this, so that's good. That's been on since I made it early spring. And that one he did bother until I put a new tool over it. 
Now he doesn't bother, but he loves potato mint. He comes over here. Oh, this is funny. This is where the deer have eaten away my tomato plant. See what they've done? This had like a hundred tomatoes. I was going to cut them all off and freeze them. So see the deer come through and they eat the tomatoes first and then they eat the leaves. They chew on the leaves. See if I have any leaves. I guess they run their mouth through and they take all the leaves off. So I've had the deer standing here. Let me back up so we can see this. And he stands there. I've got my little camera here and he eats. And then in the morning, see the tote down there? There's the chair. That's a chair that swivels. So I can get to my strawberries. Isn't that cool? I made that. And there's a video on that. That has worked out fantastic. The rabbits we just saw, they come running and they sit on the rail. See this rail here? It goes all the way around. They sit there and they eat the runners off. Whatever they can reach. And they can have them. I don't care. There's just so many strawberries. But they only want the runners. And it's just the cutest thing. And I've got videos of that. So they come running over in the morning. Even though they, they're behind me, really, their house. But they're all over the place. And they sit there. So first we have the deer. And then we have the rabbits. So all in all, everything's going good here. I must have dropped some potato mint in here. This is being taken over by potato mint. Which is really good because it's really a rare plant at times to get. So let it do its thing and then I plant it. I transplanted these over, so I don't know if they'll make it. Oops. These are just some sort of squash. This I've picked. This has thrown these yellowish green squash. And then this is, the, of course, you just saw the tomato plant. This I have been picking. I, don't, I think I picked all the squash off. Oh, that one didn't make it. Okay, so you know what you do with something like that? Let me show you. This has been fantastic. This is my pitcher. Now, the soil has dropped so far down, and that's okay, but the pitcher still goes further down. I love my pitchers. You better watch that video. I, this is what I do. I'm making my own soil. Now, in the meantime, I'm not going to get my hands all muddy. This thing is going to be full of earthworms, and look how easy it is to close up. Nothing can get in there. No birds, no rodents, no nothing. And that plant has taken off beautifully since I put that in there because there's a constant food source for those two squash plants. Look that video up because that is just fantastic. Now here is some more brassicas. This is a purple one. What's interesting is this is a cutting off of the one in my bird garden and this one's not as purple as the one that I've got in my bird garden. So maybe the ones in the bird garden are more stressed. This one's more green. It does get full sun, but it's doing really good. This is just flowers that I've got to put into my bird garden. There's a squash back there. Pepinos, look at the pepinos. Can you see them? They're all over. I love my pepinos. This is a perennial, so you leave this. This can go for years and years. So easy to do cuttings off of this. And I should do a full video on this. I haven't done one in years, but that plant, the fruit, you can eat it either way. You can pick them. They're in the tomato family, the nightshade family. You can slice it up and use it in a stir fry if you're cooking when it's unripe. Basically, it won't be sweet. If you wait till the fruit starts to turn yellow, it's kind of purple right now. But, and there's purple. If you wait till it turns a little yellow, then it's sweet like a melon. And you can, what I do is I chop it up and I put it with some red strawberries and it's a really good fruit salad. And then here is my baby pepper plant. Now my daughter was struggling. She might be a little hotter than us and said that her pepper plants, I'll put a link to her video. She's been doing a whole thing in her garden. She gets far more peppers in the shade than we do. She's ahead of us on watermelon and everything because she has warmer nights. It could be the way her garden is set up. It could be it's a small backyard, so it's more concentrated, holding the heat at night. It's hard to say, but she gets fantastic peppers. Now here, this one is getting full sun and doing okay. And this was a little, little tiny baby plant. So if you're struggling with peppers, check her video out because she's got different ideas how to get peppers growing in really hot areas and it may help you. And then of course, like I said, her watermelons are ahead of us, but I am so jazzed over the watermelons. Got a whole video on that. I've got three plants in there. I have two plants in there. Okay, so I'm only gonna get one watermelon per plant, but let me tell you something. If I can get three watermelons out of one tote and two watermelons out of the other, it is fantastic. And then of course, there's my irrigation tubing. Now I did have to put a sling last night 
because this one drooped down too much. I thought it was going to be able to hold. All of the other ones are holding really good on their own, but I didn't want to take any chances of it falling. So what I ended up is putting on a sling with some old tool. That's why I said I don't throw, throw tool away. Just tied it up, slung it underneath there, and tied it up there, and it's going to do fine. They'll be ready pretty soon. I actually see the tendril going brown. Oh, can you see it? It's turning brown. I'll have to check the other one back there. I've got a big, big one back there. I've got that one. Then I've got three here. There's one there. I just had to cover it for the deer. There's a big one there. And then there's one big one on the bottom of the tote here. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can. That is just fantastic. And then again, I'm just letting the water run into a lot of containers. I need one there to water the plants. Look at this, beautiful garlic chives, catching the water out of the tomato plant. And then those, that's where I just keep seeds. I start seeds outside. I don't have to harden them up because they're already outside. And that's it. So that's a rainbow garden on the pizza garden. I removed all the peppers the other day because I want it to reflower good and immediately Remo oh, there's some green ones back there. The red ones, immediately removing all the red ones, they started to flower again. If you leave peppers that are ripe on your plant, it will slow your plant down. Tomato plants do the same thing. Most plants do because they're done, they're ready, they did their job. So if you want the production to stay up high, try to remove them all. And I know the problem is I wasn't using that many, but the thing is I washed them and I froze them. Just put them in a plastic bag and it worked out really good. No, I have not gotten to that, but we'll get to that soon. There's another tree colored growing in there and I fill up that pot. It's got a small hole on the bottom. Walk away and it slowly waters that trough. Picked that up at Walmart last year for $5. Okay, so I think we can just take a quick zip because there's not much new here. The deer are munching on different things. I did get a great big cucumber off of there and it already started another one. Don't leave the cucumbers. See what happened the moment I picked it? I got new cucumbers already starting. So if you leave them, you slow your production. All right, here, the cardboard boxes. I'm pretty much done with it. I don't know if I'll do cardboard boxes next year, but I might, so we'll see. But right now here, I'm just letting it do its thing. And there still is a watermelon back there, but see again, it's misshapen. And it could be because it was an old plant. See, this is just too skinny. So I trimmed a lot of my other watermelon down. If you wanna see the video, I'll put a link to that too, the one in the rainbow garden. I'm done with these boxes. I'm gonna compost them. They're all gone. I've got great soil in there now, and I'm going to have it in totes where I have full control. I can put a two system in there and not have to deal with tree roots and deal with any of that, and it retains water really well. This is prime real estate. This gets the sun, look at this. We're early in the morning and I've got the sun here. It gets sun all day. So I don't wanna play around with cardboard boxes when I can have a wonderful winter garden and then in the summer turn it into something else. Same thing here, I harvested a bunch of zucchini, different squash out of here the other day. And this is just, I just love it. I love the way I did the design this year where I've got chair up, tote down. Chair up with a tote tote down. So it kind of zigzags all the way through. So it gives lift and I got extra in there. And I'm thinking of putting in between some flower pots or floral pots and maybe going ahead and putting in purple tree colored. I wasn't going to because it attracts the deer, but what are you going to do? I've got the deer here anyways. I hope you can see the dragonfly that is sitting right here on the aloe vera stake. Whoop, he just took off. My meadow is doing wonderful. I love the meadow. I've got tomatillos growing in there, tomatoes growing in there. I've got Chinese forget-me-not flowers that came up. I threw some wild flower seeds in here. They came up. I've got some four o'clock flowers that are pink back there. I planted those. I moved in from around the yard. I've got everything. There's squash. There's black sugar cane. There's walking onions. There's celery in there. There's broccoli back there. I, I don't even know what else is coming up in there, but there's a ton of stuff. So this has been fun. No, it was not supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be a wild garden, but what are you gonna do? The birds love it and so do the deer. They munch and eat the tomato plants. Stay here and eat them. But look at, I've got tomatoes. What are they? I don't know, a hybrid that came up. See the tomatillos back here? Is that too cool? And there's my first squash. 
on the squash plant. Looks like it's going to be a spaghetti squash of some sort. Still working on the ponds. I've got a solar fountain down there. I'm going to change it up. I leave a bowl of water out for the animals that come through so they have nice, fresh, clean water. And then I've got to do all this. I haven't done this yet. I've got all winter and there's the aloe veras. Those flowers throw the greatest spikes to stick in among your plants. This is them and it brings in the Orioles. If you've got tomatoes and you've got hornworms and you've got Orioles, if you can get some sticks in there, I use that. I stick it in there and the Orioles, the young ones, the females, the babies, the males, they all come in and they look for hornworms. They love hornworms. And being that they love hornworms and I don't, I stick a lot of stakes in there because they can't go on tomato plants. Tomato plants have what's called, let's walk over here, trichomes. Trichomes are sticky and they, they've called it even tomato tar. There's different names for it. We have to wash it off with soap and water and the birds have no way of getting it off their feet. Water doesn't work. So they don't want to be in your tomato plants. They're not going to look for insects. But if you put some sticks in there, they'll, they know right away. They go on the sticks, they'll look around and they'll pull the worms off. This is full of squash. The tomatillos I'm really happy with, but the squash, I've got to go pick this. The two spaghetti squash are done. See how bright yellow that is? They're done. Then it's not hurting anything leaving it. The only thing it would hurt if something else got it. There's a butternut. I think that's pretty much done too. It's a little one, but that's okay. Gonna have to get that off. And then there's zucchini still in there. There's shark fin melon in there. I don't know what else is in there. It's kind of like a jungle. What's going to happen probably in the winter is I threw a bunch of seeds in there and old tomatoes and stuff. They'll probably take over and start to grow. It's, it's basically for fun, but it's going to make my own soil. My apple trees are being all chewed up by the deer. I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to make another box garden I never did. Oh, let's walk over here and then we'll wrap this up. This is going to be my new ginger turmeric table. It has worked out fantastic. Drag this over here, Gary found in trash. It sits under the pepper tree. This is the tree that the hawks hopefully will breed in next year if he finds a new mate because you know the story. A neighbor down the block dropped off a bunch of raccoons that came from another city, another area, came into our yard and killed the female cooper hawk that nests up on top in the tree there. And the male's been lonely all year screaming, but the thing is they do mate for life, but as long as the females, the pairs alive, they stay together. Now that he's lost his mate, there'll be somebody else hopefully that comes along, either a young female or maybe a female that lost her mate. They'll find each other and hopefully we'll have them go to nest because he has been working the nest up there. So he's still building it because they build it for the female and then they work together. But here, this has worked fantastic. Look how good this is growing. So this is turmeric. So I'm going to get more turmeric growing in here and ginger. And I might take that old table from the front yard and do the same thing. So we'll see. And then the chair garden is done. All done. Is that cool? All I have is one more tote. Threw this together one night, literally in less than 10 minutes. I so love my irrigation tubing. I'm probably going to put a watermelon in there. And then I've got some squash growing in there, garlic, chives. I've got tomatoes. I've got beans growing. See the beans? More garlic, chives. But see the beans? I want to collect the seeds, so I'm leaving them do their thing. Because that's what I want right now, the dried beans. If you pick them too early, you won't be able to grow them. So they've got to mature on the plant. If you pick them when they're small and dry them up, there won't be anything left. There won't be anything inside. Like this one's ready to come off. And there'll be some beans. See, there's a big bean in there. But as far as picking them early and trying to save the seeds, it won't work. More garlic chives. Look at this. Okay, so a little bit wonky on the end, but it's still good to eat. Squash is too many in there is what it is. See, this is where I've been pulling them out from. They came and started growing in there, and I just pull them out, and I move the whole plant, and I take most of the leaves off. It droops, but it comes back, and that's the one in the front yard that I moved a month ago. More in here. We'll see what they grow in here. And then garlic chives, some tomatoes in here with, oh, beautiful Swiss chart. Isn't that gorgeous? And then this is my watermelon plant, which I believe, let's see if I can get you in there. There's one, I don't know if you can see, one watermelon. Let's see if we can see it. There it is. 
I'm hoping you can see it because I can't see my camera. Isn't that gorgeous? So I've got one watermelon on this watermelon plant. We'll see if we get any more. If we do, we do. And if we don't, we don't. I'm happy with that. And like I said, I'm going to get another watermelon in there. So I'll sit for a second and wrap this up. So let's see. My 10 minute garden tour has taken me too long. So that's it. This is such a beautiful place to sit. I absolutely love it. The sun hasn't come through here yet. It will. It already has, actually. It came through when it was still by the palm tree back there, and now it's, it's here. It's actually going to be shadier as the year goes on now because where the sun is going right now is it's going this way. For the summer, it goes that way, and then it comes back. So it's going to be behind the tree, and it will stay nice and shady here where I'm sitting. This is such a beautiful place. This is where I work at night and the coyotes come through here. I'm not thrilled on coyotes, but they do come through here. I just shush them away and they leave. But the deer, that day I went live, he came down. And then the, the next day he came right down, uh, right walking around here. He thought, well, you're working out here. I just want some tomatoes. But the deer come through here and they live in this area now. And we've got, we've got a small herd, I think, is what's staying around here. Normally they move on, but there hasn't been that much food. And food and water is important. And of course, what have I given them? Water. I've given them water. And now they've taken a liking to tomatoes, something. I can see they already ate this tomato last night. The one that's right here. Yep, they chewed on that. And that's what they do. So I'm not going to worry about it because I'll have a, I've got a lot of tomatoes. I've got tomatoes growing on my deck. I've got tomatoes growing everywhere. I think Gary's got tomatoes, a few in his garden. So we have more than we need. So let them chew on that and stay away from the watermelon and anything I don't want them to chew on. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And go ahead and ask questions and I'll try to do maybe some separate videos, maybe on Pepino or Stevia or different things. You know, I'll just tell you what I know and pass that along. And if you want, go check out my daughter's. She's starting to put up her garden and she's, they just trimmed their first bananas. It's, this whole thing is a learning experience, but you know what? It's important. It's important that we know where our food comes from and it's important to understand seeds and what seeds we can save and what we cannot. There's a lot of stuff that has changed over the years. We have to be careful on soil. So we have to kind of be aware and I'm gonna to have to start doing testing. Seeds that maybe are not important to me, test some soil and if they come up and the seedlings look healthy and strong, then go for it. Even if I start them in my new method, I've got, I start seeds in or in a plastic bag, put them in some soil and if they don't come up, you know, test it, then you'll know, whoa, that may not be good. So for now, like I said, I might plant some corn in the bags that I'm kind of iffy on and then, dis and then test them later. So maybe I can get some more corn going before the end of the season. With that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. This was fun. I just finished the garden tour and look, I see Gary's coming home on the cameras. <gasps> a good trash find. It's a trash day. It's not even trash day. Look at that. He'll find it. If it's out there, ooh, he'll find it. There it is. And look at that. Actually, truthfully, my daughter called me. It was in her yard, and she didn't want it anymore. And you know what? What she doesn't want is perfect for my garden, whether I grow in it or store in it. And he'll run for those things anytime. Cool.